Hi, my name is Nina Lee Aquino, and um, I'm an artistic director at Factory. Uh, I'm also a director and a, a freelance dramaturg as well. I was fortunate enough, uh, you know, during Sherry B's kind of uh, last year as the AD of the National Theatre School, she called me up out of the blue and um, she's like, Nina, I really want to, uh, I really want you to, ha to have you at our school, um, carte blanche, anything you want to do with the first years. Um, think about it and then get back to me. And that really scared me. Um, A, not because I don't have any experience in teaching uh, anything to kids, but I think that I was, I had an impression in my mind that uh, I needed to teach something like with academic or uh, something really high, you know, go. And so I called Sherry, I go, Sherry, I, I can only really bring myself to the kids. And what I do, I do know two things is new play development, which is my a passion of mine and um, diverse works so she's like do that <laughs> and so then I got to thinking um, about it a little bit more and then I came up came up with basically project other and uh, knowing the makeup of the class that I was going to teach it was basically a class of 11 students and 10 of them were white from different parts of Canada, so it was diverse in that way. And one was a girl, a student from um, Zambia. So very, very interesting <laughs> dynamic. And so uh, what I did was, uh, for the month that I was with them, I collected about 12 to 15 uh, Canadian plays by um, uh, Canadian playwrights of color. And how I kind of filtered them in terms of my selection process was, I'm going to choose plays that really feature young characters, young voices, as opposed to, you know, because there's lots of them out there. I mean, not a whole ton, but there is a canon. Uh, uh, but for me, what was important that, that if I was going to introduce culturally diverse works to these uh, uh, young artists, that they find their peers you know, not maybe not necessarily themselves because I, that was the whole point of Project Other. It was the, the study of the other. Um, that they could see somebody else, but if they had something in common, it would be the age. So all the characters that I, you know, so all the plays that I chose were written by diverse artists, um, but with with young characters. It's centered around, around young lives or young voice. So I was able to cull about 12 to 15 works from Marjorie Chan's Madness in the Square, uh, Rosa Laborde's um, Leo, uh, Jason McHanoy, uh, Mary Beth Badian's um, the, the Making of St. Jerome. So s all of those pieces um, were either already pre produced or published, but some were also um, uh, new works. And so I, I had all the, you know, the, the playwrights, I let them know about this and they're like, okay, great. And, you know, so armed with this, I, I came into the class and sure enough, of course, they're like a little bit shocked because I said, okay, so this is what we're going to do. I want you guys to, I, so I split the class into various groups and gave them their assigned plays and they were to uh, do staged readings of it and present it. Um, to the rest of the group that was not coming up. And after that, we would have a discussion about it. Um, but uh, uh, apart from doing the stage reading of it, there was a research component of it to, to do any and all of the research that the play, the environment of the play, where it's coming from, all of that to do re and do a, re a presentation, like a dramaturgical presentation of the background of the play, where the play is based historically, blah blah blah. Even the country, like if if the play was set in India, what what part of India give us a, a, a real good three dimensional picture of where the play is coming from, or in the voice or the character. So yeah, so you have something like Banana Boys by Leon Orius. Um, and assigning it to five white boys and uh, talking about Hong Kong 
or um, the origins of the Cantonese accent or you know what what is banana like the term banana in the Canadian the Chinese Canadian context so all of that so they you know I also did Gas Girls by Donna Michelle St. Bernard you know which kind of really placed Tasha who is the Zambian student in a really powerful place I think that you know for the first time her classmates were going to get to know her world and where she was coming from which was coincidental because I'm like oh that's great like I have a play that that's that features a Africa, in a sense. So yeah, so the, uh, is a month of really intense research and discovery for uh, these kids, including Nat- you know Natasha, who was who was like the only kind of brown student, and it was a present, you know. And then in the end, after all the stage readings and getting to know the works as a showcase to the rest of the school, we put the best excerpts, so the, the most favorite excerpts from all the pieces and put it together and showcase the school. But that also, so we rehearsed that, but that also meant that the actors needed to do some deep uh, dialect work. And this is where the tricky part was, because one of the assignments was for them to learn the Chinese national anthem for Marjorie Chan's um, Manus of the Square, which was about the the Tiananmen Square Revolution. Um, They had to learn a South Asian um, accent uh, they had to learn a Cantonese accent, so all of that. So they w- they had to research that and learn it either through, you know, deep research and also consultant, like bring in other people in the school that were of that heritage to help them to be their dialect coach, or call people and be creative in, in trying to figure out trying to be as authentic and as honorable as they can be for these characters that they were as actors going to communicate to an audience so yeah and and that that was a mind-blowing experience especially because there was an audience to see their work and the response from the audience and Guillermo Verdecchi actually saw it and was just like wow oh you know it was quite powerful and the other students of color who were seeing this their white peers performing them in a sense was like it gave them perspective of, of how, I guess, their white peers see them when they're performing Shakespeare, right? right? So it's kind of like, oh, okay, now I get it. I, I get the fuss now because, of course, there's the the thing of, of seeing, you know, a white boy with a, perform a Cantonese accent done quite nicely, with, with executed well with skill. But there was still something kind of like, wow, this is really interesting. It's not bad, but interesting. And it gave them pause to think of like, so that's what it's like. And mind you, that this was a whole exercise. Like it was not meant for the class to go out and go, I can play, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. But it, it, again, it was um, an exercise in deeper understanding of, of the other and of themselves. It ended up being... Um, it introduced them to a whole new work that was beyond Shakespeare and the classics, you know, that was beyond Judith Thompson and George F. Walker and David French, you know, so that now when you go, what's one, give me one of your favorite plays, a white boy can say Banana Boys by Leonorius and you wouldn't bat an eyelash about that. Um, it gave them a new vocabulary to think about contemporary Canadian theater. Again, it kind of opened you know, their minds in terms of like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't just be looking to works that are just about me and, or, you know, universal, like that I I could be attracted to works that are specific, that are not about me. And I could still, there's still power in in sharing and absorbing that knowledge. Um, And again, uh, uh, understanding as a performer, what it takes to find that authentic voice to understand and respect difference uh, and to honor that. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, to, to, to learn how to do an accent from Bombay uh, is not just about sitting and looking and watching Apu in an episode of Simpsons, then that's the way you study the accent, right? But learning the history mm-hmm. of colonization in different countries and why a Filipino accent is the way it is because of the Spanish influence. And we were, all of that, they now carry that knowledge. All these 
11 actors carry the knowledge of like South America from all the works that they and they have a more global knowledge of of you know who resides here in Canada and the many different voices that we have and that's that was something that they were really proud of and that nobody can take away from them as performers they they're so rich for richer for that so that was kind of project other and of course i guess somebody got wind of it and it came to diana and diana called me up right away and says i want you to do that for humber and so i started that last year with the first years their own project other and was really again successful um and then so now uh because i'm moving on to working with the second years with david yee and we're creating a play for them uh, she wants to do it again with the incoming first years, but um, hiring, you know, uh, another person to kind of administer it. Because I think there was a genuine, um, I can't really articulate it in the sense that, you know, during the showcase and, all, you know, when everybody was watching them, there was a, and I guess the safety of knowing that this is an exercise. Again, this is something that we're not going to tour this or anything, but that it, it was an exercise in understanding and respect and, and difference that uh, the, the genuineness kind of, I think, shone through. So nobody really, and because they did it so well, um, yeah, that nobody really, the whole idea of appropriation of voice never even came up in the discussion. I think people felt that the genuineness of, of what the project was trying to do um, and again it was actors learning to really be in somebody else's shoes in a deeper way mm -hmm. it's about communication and dialogue I think that um, uh, the hesitation often comes from you know it, it, it's fear right like who am I gonna offend who am I gonna hurt who like do you know what I mean and I think that we're as Canadians we're often uh, too polite or too afraid to kind of seek help uh, for the, the for the delicate matters and i think that again look to us and that's what you know philip aiken and yvette nolan and you know we and michael graz we've all been saying it's like guys like if you're gonna go into this territory that's great but if you're not sure before you kind of jump with off without a parachute or whatever there it, we've all we, we're always available and accessible for a dialogue, a consultation, advice, or something, right? So that, so that, like, if, if that person ever called me up and we had a discussion, I can go, wait a minute, because we all have.